Hello, and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today, the topic of this video is why your spouse or partner or other people who live with you should have a firearms license. And if you're one of those people and you're getting shown this video to settle an argument, I'm sorry, but I hope this is useful information. As a bit of background, my wife is not really a big gun person. She's gone to the range with me. She's tried it out. It's not her thing, and that's fine. It's never going to be her thing, and we're all allowed different hobbies. But, uh, oh, and before anyone offers me a helpful suggestion, if that helpful suggestion involves pink guns, I will tell you that the thing she likes less than firearms in general is pink guns. So an important safety tip, do not give my wife a pink gun. She will not appreciate it. But regardless, she's got her firearms license. And one of the reasons is a particularly nasty tactic that I've seen, and I've seen this in the wild you know, with actual people. So this isn't just theoretical. This is something that I have observed to happen. And the way this works is the police take some sort of interest in you. And this may be because you've been arrested for something, maybe because the police have taken you into custody for a mental health warrant, or it may be something else. They might uh, think you're involved in some sort of criminal activity and have gotten a warrant. But regardless, they get a warrant to search your house and possibly to seize your firearms. And they do this while you're not there. You might actually be sitting in a police cell at the time. And so they're talking to your spouse or partner or other people who live with you. And they say, hi, you know, we're here. We might have a warrant or they might not. We would like to see the guns. And they will, you know, your spouse or partner says, okay, and takes them downstairs, shows them the gun safe. And the police say, well, thank you very much. Are you able to open this up so that we don't have to drill it out? And your spouse, partner, you know, roommate, whoever says, sure, let me get the keys or let me just plug in the combination. And they do that. Now the police have access to your guns. And you might be thinking, whoa, I don't like this. We haven't even gotten to the bad part yet. Because the bad part is this. The police then say, thank you very much. We really appreciate the help. Now, if you could please turn around and put your hands behind your back because you are under arrest for possession of firearm without a license. And you might be saying, whoa, and I guarantee you, your partner is going to be going, whoa, because now they're under arrest. And the police theory here is that they, because they had access to the safe, that they were in possession of those firearms, notwithstanding the fact that you are a licensed gun owner who also lives there. So, you may then be facing charges. Uh, for instance, one of the things they could do is charge you with careless storage. The argument being that your storage was careless because you let your unlicensed spouse, partner, etc., have access to the access to the guns by knowing the combination or knowing where the key was. You might be facing a firearm prohibition application in some fashion. Regardless of what it is you're facing, you're facing something and your partner is facing what actually might be a more serious charge. Now, here's where things get even uglier is that you will probably get an offer along the lines of, if you agree to plead guilty or to accept the firearm prohibition or whatever it is, we will drop the charges against your spouse. And you're going to be under a lot of pressure to take that because I can pretty much guarantee you that your partner who does not have a firearms license is not going to be nearly as you know upset about you losing your guns as they are about the possibility of the criminal charges they're facing so you're going to be under tremendous pressure and that's a really ugly tactic it's one that i wish i had never seen used i one that i'd like to never hear about again but it exists and so you should be aware that this exists and be aware that this is a possibility and prepare a bit for it because <laughs> It could happen. You might say, not to me, I am perfectly law abiding, but sometimes the police get things wrong. For instance, somebody else that you don't know might be on Facebook as saying all sorts of things about how they want to, you know, go on a spree and so forth. And the police try to figure out who it is and maybe they get it wrong. Maybe they come to your door instead. You know, you may have somebody, somebody gets fired from your job and they blame you. And they call up the police and they say, this person was making all sorts of threats. And so now the police, believing that person, 
have come to your, you know, come to look at you and you're going to have to get that sorted out, but it'd be a lot easier to be sorted out if you weren't under this sort of tactic here, this kind of pressure. So how do you avoid this? Well, as I mentioned before, the, the big one, and this is the one I like best, is get your partner to get a firearms license because, and they should get one that has all of the same sort of privileges that you do. So if you have restricted firearms, then they should get one that has also restricted firearms. This may not be possible because if you have prohibited firearms and you're grandfathered in, your spouse, partner, etc., may not be able to get the same uh, classifications. So you may need to consider other options as well. But having a firearms license is always a good idea if there are firearms in the house. And so that's that's the first one. It really means that they can't turn around and charge them with possession of firearm without a license because they've got the license. The next option is storage that prevents any access at all. So in this case, you know, you if it's got a key, you make sure that they don't have the key, they don't know where it is. You know, they just can't provide access. Uh, if it's got a combination, that combination lives in your head and your head alone, and you don't ever share it. And you make sure that they don't, you know, see over your shoulder, that they don't figure it out somehow. Because that way the police aren't going to be able to say that they were in possession because they literally could not, you know, couldn't open it. This has some downsides to it because there are times when you might want your partner to be able to access the safe. An example I give is I had a sewage flood and a sewage flood is terrible. It is one of the worst things that can happen to your house that short of it, you know, burning down or a police raid. But, uh, you know, once that happens, what you're doing is you're running around scrambling, trying to find all your valuables and get them to higher ground. Because I will tell you that a sewage flood is incredibly destructive. It corroded metal in ways that I just didn't expect because I don't know what was in that stuff. But regardless, one of the things I was doing was getting guns and getting them to higher ground because they're valuable. And if I wasn't home and my partner did not have access to the safe, well, it's just gonna fill with sewage and you're gonna have to replace those guns. Some of which might be sentimental, some of which might be irreplaceable. You're not gonna like that. And also if you've got a safe, you might also want to use it for storage of, you know, documents, etc., etc. So all of these are reasons why this is maybe not the ideal tactic. The other thing, and you might say, well, you know, this also forces the police to drill your safe out. But to my mind, that's usually the preferable way to go because I generally prefer that the police drill out my safe or have to pry it open rather than me helping them get in because a safe can be expensive, but a lawyer is more expensive. And you're gonna save money if the police are not able to as easily argue that you consent to the search. And if your partner isn't getting charged with anything, you're gonna save money on that, even if the safe is destroyed. So there's some costs and benefits on that particular one. The other thing is just to prepare in advance for this possibility. If many gun owners are sort of self-reliant people who like to plan ahead for eventualities. If you're the sort of person who keeps a, you know, an emergency preparedness kit in your vehicle, and I do, it was, when I went off the road in the winter, it was great. I had warm blankets, I had food, I had water, I, I had a book. I was, you know, I could have been there for days without problem. Fantastic. But this isn't the only kind of problem that can befall you. And so one of the things you should go over is what happens if the police come to your door? Do you want to cooperate with the police? And the answer to that is typically no. Do you want to consent to searches? Again, no. Do you want to answer their questions? Again, no. But going over this so that your partner is prepared for these things is helpful. Uh, the other thing is to make sure that they know, you know, not to, you know, if the police are at your door saying, we've got a warrant, we've, you know, or we need to search, phone a lawyer right away because as much as this can, I hope this is an informative video, but it's only able to provide information in a very general sense. I don't have the ability to go over the warrant with you because it hasn't been issued. 
call a lawyer who can offer you individualized advice in this particular situation and can help talk you down because you know it's going to be terrifying if you've got police coming through you know with ar-15s and you know half a dozen guys there and you know maybe a dog maybe whatever you know you're going to be freaked out that lawyer who's probably sitting you know either in an office or laying in bed taking a late night phone call they're going to be a lot calmer about things they can give you sober sedate advice that will help you through things it's really nice to be able to talk to a person who is not in the sort of the panic moment and who can walk you through things as needed so make sure that your partner knows call a lawyer get that you know get that going because you know they could advise them maybe you don't want to open that safe you know oh you know where the combination is let's keep that between us let's not necessarily tell the police that because you don't have to volunteer that and they can figure that out on their own so talking to a lawyer you know and you might be in a situation where you were under some obligation to comply the lawyer is the one to answer that question and to tell you whether that's the situation not you know not this video this is not you know specific legal advice it's just not going to be able to do that and you can implement multiples of these things so for instance you can make sure that they have a license and that they know what to do when the police come knocking on their door all of this is is good practice and good planning so that's sort of the the main reason why i suggest that a partner or spouse or you know parents if you're living with your parents maybe you know they should have the same sort of thing why they should really consider getting a firearms license um, next little point of business is that i have just recently acquired or hired a research assistant which will be used for some future videos needs a name so i would love to see some naming suggestions in the comments uh, please shy away from the names of politicians because the implications on that are not something i really want to deal with and frankly not something you should want to deal with or be putting online if that's kind of your feelings so no politicians please no ex-girlfriends no ex-wives no ex-husbands none of that nobody you've got beef with but uh, beyond that you know if you've got a clever idea for a name i would love to see it um Thank you very much for watching. I, I hope this has been educational and informational. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you. I hope this has armed you with knowledge.